Hey Harstem. Well in this game my first push was a little late. I had more units than it usually has and didn't do too badly with it. Everything else was on point. Then as the game goes on I multitask really hard attacking with multiple armies in different locations at the same time while spending my money well behind it. My upgrades also were really on point giving me a lead in every fight. I even had more workers than him in a TVZ. He did two tech switches. The first one from Lingbane into Hydra Corruptor, which I reacted to by building less Marauders and more Marines, because you know, Marauders have less DPS versus Hydras and can't even attack Corruptors. But then, all of a sudden, BOOM! He switched into mass Ultras and obviously my Marines die and I lose the game. He forgets to build units after this. So I ran over the map and kill a bunch of stuff instead of leaving because I didn't know the game was over yet. I am sorry for that. Now the question, is it Imba or do I suck? Name, Clem from Wish, race, Terran, League, Platinum, Server, EU. At 2.9k MMR here, we have a Terran player complaining about the imbalanced TVZ uh, matchup and um, basically saying that he was very on point this game. He said, all right, my macro was very good. My upgrades were very good. My multitasking was not just very good. It was perfect, practically. Um, multitasking many times um, at different locations at the same time with different armies. Now, whenever I get a message like this from a, what was he, platinum? From a platinum player, I always get a little bit afraid. I have yet to see the first Platinum player that actually manages to control units in more than one location. Hell, I'm gonna up that statement. I am yet to see a Platinum player control his units properly in a single location, let alone more than one. It is really difficult in StarCraft 2 to control your army well. It is so difficult that probably 80 to 90% of the StarCraft population don't even know what controlling an army well looks like, except when they watch clips of Clem or Maru do it, or uh, and it was, I don't know, other players that have good control that I can't currently think of. But um, for whatever reason, Clem from Wish here, with the perfect control in multiple locations at the same time, um, still loses to a Zerg player that is 2.9k MMR. That is, that is honestly quite wild. So I'm really looking forward to this. Like, if you read that balance complaint form, you'd figure that we're watching the most perfect player in the world. And so far, I kind of like this build order. Reactor first. Um, could be going into a triple Rex here. Could go into something like a four, six Marine into a Helium push. Those are really the two main options. But because he's still mining extra gas, it most likely is going to be a factory opener. Um... Is what I would say if this was a very high level player. But because most players below masters don't actually care too much about optimizing mineral mining. It is still possible that he'll go into three racks. Always I always like to keep my options open during these Iodises. Because I've seen some wild stuff, you know. People taking two gas, floating 500 gas and then getting a third CC before their second barracks. It's like, alright buddy. Like, this is obviously not going to be it. Yeah. Go into like the five minute mark. They have 900 gas in the bank. 23 workers, although they have triple CC. It's like, oops. Okay, it's actually going to be a three rex. He builds both barracks at the same time. Usually not quite what you want to be doing. Um, as the money doesn't come in at the same time, right? It's not like you go from zero to 300 all of a sudden. No, you get you go from, you know, there is a, a gradual increase of money when your SUVs bring it back to the command center. So... Once you hit 150 minerals and you have money for that first barracks, you just want to throw that down. Especially because when you're playing three racks, you will require two tech labs. And that one barracks that finishes faster than the other can start the tech lab quicker and thus can also start the stim research quicker. Which is important because you want to kind of um, finish stim and combat shield at around the same time for when you're pushing with your first 19 to 20 marines. Um, but in this case, that's not going to happen because both tech labs will be built at approximately the same time, I assume. And then Combat Shield is just going to finish way before Stim ever will 
and that is an issue. There's also some slight oversaturation going on in the main base. Now, this could be for a very high level mind game, but it could also not be. And given the fact that this man built both of his barracks as close to the edge to make it as easy to scout as possible, I doubt it's a very high level mind game. But um, because I want to flex my knowledge, I'm still going to explain this very high level mind game that it could have been. So when you're playing a 3 rex opener, you play this off of a single gas. That means that most every other Terran build opener is with a second gas. And the second gas can be built in the main, and again, Zerg can also be built on the low ground. But a lot of Terrans like building it in the main these days. If you have a second gas in the main base, that means that there's three extra SCVs in the main base. So if a Zergling scout would come in and would see this amount of SCVs in the natural right now, the Zerg would be able to tell us like, hey, there's probably two gas in the main currently because I'm missing three SCVs. This is something that people scout for at a very high level. Now, first of all, I don't think that the Zerg will scout at all. And second of all, I've, I don't think that Clem from Wish knows what he's doing. But in especially TVP, it is thus a pretty common mind game to keep three extra SCVs in your main base mining minerals um, and although it's slightly less effective than mining them from the natural, it does not give the Protoss a free scout once they see with the Adept, hey, there's uh, too many SCVs here in the natural, that it's going to be a 3 rack. So a very high level mind game from a player that had no clue that he was doing it. Just like with the, the monkeys and the typewriters, you know? If you give a, a, a group of monkeys infinite time and a bunch of typewriters, then eventually they uh, reproduce the entire works of Shakespeare. They actually, uh, I think I mentioned this before, but they actually once did this experiment somewhere in England, obviously. They got, I think, 2K pounds for it to conduct this experiment. And they gave a couple of monkeys in a zoo a typewriter. And they also filmed it. And they produced, well, not the entire works of Shakespeare, but they did produce five pages of writing. I think it was mainly consisting of the letter E if I recall correctly. Um, so it wasn't the most literate monkeys. But uh, you always see that. You get them a typewriter and they just kind of abuse it. I think midway through the experiment, one of the alpha monkeys also started using it as a as a lavatory, which is a fancy word for a toilet. That word always kind of tricked me up. Uh, yeah, kind of tricked me. All right. Back to this game, though. Enough about monkeys and typewriters. As we have our own uh, Terran monkey over here... Uh, smashing his keyboard and he actually produced a pretty decent result he has a, a lot of marines out now like i mentioned his stim and combat are a bit later than usual this push is supposed to hit with 19 marines or 21 marines if you play with the reactor first one of the two depending on how tight your macro is and how many scvs you're cut at about 455 with both stim and combat shield this push here uh from clem from wish is going to hit a full minute later um, with, well, slightly more marines. There's obviously five marines back here. So this is 25 marines. So he has four marines more, but he also hits a minute late. Now, that's usually not a great thing to do. Let's take a look at the micro here as well. Uh, not the greatest control. He kind of ate four banelings straight to the face and lost basically all of his marines because of that. But also, it really could have been a lot worse. He at least tried controlling his army and we saw something that resemble the split so i'm not even too upset by that um but yeah what i was gonna say is that if you only get five marines more in an entire minute that is usually not great and also with this push it's really important that you hit as tight as possible because later on it just becomes easier for the zerg to hold they naturally have more units they have probably have a bailing nest already done in some cases even a roach warren their queens will have more energy which means that transfuses will be very easy so yeah it's it just feels to me that hitting harder with 21 marines and hitting faster is more important than hitting later with four more marines. Especially given that in a minute, if you have the production that this feller had, you could technically get 12 marines more. So he was he was lacking seven marines somewhere. They got lost in the process. This is a cool wall. This is a really cool wall. There used to be a game that I played back in the day called Settlers, where you had these dudes, I think they were called Explorers, and they would move the border of your kingdom manually. They'd pick up like the little pixel and they'd drop the pixel somewhere else. Um, 
And it, this is kind of what these dudes are doing as well, you know? They're just manually just building a new border to their kingdom. And in Clan from Wish's case, that kingdom consisted of the main and the natural. Uh, but now has a third base on the way. This is a great turret as well. This is defending absolutely nothing. Look at that. That is impressive as well. If you have a base that is this filled, managing to build a turret that actually covers nothing. I didn't even know that was possible here. This guy must be like an engineer. Absolutely calculated. Look at this. So the only thing it's currently protecting is the SCV that just finished building it. Um, this barracks can be attacked from the bottom. This factory can be attacked everywhere. The entire mineral line is free. I guess if a gas SCV returns the gas over here, it would be safe against Mutalisk. But this is the most useless turret I've seen in my entire life. Nice. Very good job there. A uh, good start already here by Clem from Wish. We also have some slight oversaturation issues in the natural. Um, I do have to admit his macro is quite good. I don't like the buildings he's building or the order he's doing it in. And I've, I've mentioned this before. Like there's... No, actually, this looks fine. This is... Is this five? No, it's six. Okay, so it's one too many barracks compared to what it usually is. And if this was a very high level game, I would be upset about it. It's like, oh my god... You're building one more barracks than you should be. Um, and you also have three tech labs, which are really useless. But in this case, I don't mind it. If you can't spend your money with five barracks and you're a lower level player, then the correct answer is to get a sixth barracks so you can spend your money easier. That's a very good call. And I like that he's kind of you know saying, you know what, I may be a little bit weaker than, than, than some of the top players at this. So I'll just get an extra barracks. You know, and he's not afraid to say it. He's not afraid to do it. Please teach up your tanks. There we go. Did he stim? Okay, he stimmed just now. Right? That was a, a very late thing. I want to see that fight again. Did he? I think he just forgot the stim. Was he looking at something? Uh, probably busy multitasking somewhere on the map. Okay. Okay, so he just doesn't control anything. And then, oh, he's splitting. He's splitting the units and then he stims in the end. Did he just... Oh, he sieged these very late as well. Yeah, that was very painful. Um, this is not a good fight, as he lost absolutely everything. Killed like five links. He's down in resources lost, which is impressive. <laughs> the the medevacs return back home empty. This is a very sad sight to see. He's like, hey, what happened with the boys? He's like, uh... They went to a better place. Can we go there as well? Yeah, sure, hop on in. And boom. The next few get transported to the front. Six gases coming out. You still have this uh, high barracks count. Ooh, command center on the way as well. Honestly, you're playing pretty close to... Not perfect. Well, no, you're actually not playing pretty close to perfect. You have 36 workers in your natural, which is extreme oversaturation at this point. Your third base isn't even saturated yet. There's no rally point on this third nexus or on this third command center either. Purling Bane is defending right now. But you said eventually he'll transition into Hydra Corruptor. Talking about a local composition, huh? Uh, these are uh, the five marines that are sent out, or the six marines sent out on scouting duty. I don't think they're going to have a very good time on scouting duty. They tried sticking together to stay warm, and then they got hit by Bane links. This army is going to try to push forward. I would suggest sieging the tanks a little bit back, maybe over here, over here. Rather than straight up in the middle of the fight. Um, the tank is a long range... What was this? Look at this. These marines are being surrounded. And this guy, rather than picking them up, uses the boost hotkey to fly away. Although there's not a single anti-air unit here. Look at this. Same amount of clicks, the boost and the pickup. The, the Zerk already believed that they were gonna get picked up. And it's like, wait a second, he left them behind. And these Marines looking up, like, hey, what the hell's going on over here, boys? <laughs> hey, this is some sadistic, uh, some sadistic, sadistic medevacs. They've seen a lot of the Marines die already, and now they're gonna pick up the next, the next wave. He's just sending them to his death. I don't think he's controlled a single army yet, or, or, or tried to keep it alive. Um... Anyway, I was going to talk about the, the Hydra into Corruptor, which I'm really, really hyped for. Because the last time I saw someone play Hydra Corruptor is when uh, Loco sent in the Iotis form. 
and that was a great one so games with hydra corruptor have a you know a, a very positive connotation in my head i like this move out so once again we have a move out i wouldn't mind if we borrow some of the mines preemptively so that we don't have to do it while we're being killed by banelings and well none of these mines get a shot off the marine stim the medifacts are idling and now they should once again boost back home or maybe just relax over here for a bit all of these fights have actually been really really bad it's been surprising to see um how big terran's army is getting and how hard it is getting smashed every single time it is it is truly something else uh, it, it does not make me happy this this does not spark joy my friends it, it really does not um seeing marine after marine army being sent out just straight to the death i do like the walling although the wall here is so far out that it almost feels like you can't really defend it anymore it does help against potential ling ling bane run buys then we have another big f2 move sending our entire army across the map three more barracks on the way so we're already at nine we're going up to 12 right now that is really pushing it but once again if you have trouble <sighs> Did Alcius lose all of his medivacs? This was the worst fight of all of them. I just don't understand it. Didn't he? What did he say in his form? Didn't he say he was multitasking? As the game goes on, I multitask really hard. Attacking with multiple armies in different locations at the same time while spending my money well behind it. Maybe there is a theory that I have. Is that... He was playing a second game of StarCraft at a different screen. And he was macroing in this one. And then on the second screen, he also macroed and microed as well. And that was where the multitasking was. Because so far... Uh, look, I, I like when people try to multitask. But so far, Clem from Wish hasn't even been able to single task. Like... He actually has been looking at his army a lot as well, which is what makes me even more confused, angry, and sad. Frustrated. Lots of emotions at the same time. Like, he scans. He sees this army. Now, at this point, any healthy person would look at this and go, I think I should go home. He has five... Okay, he actually kind of walks home. But he's not really walking home. Okay, this is not retreating, by the way. This is not retreating, okay? He should have retreated his entire army after the scan. And just because these marines stay alive doesn't mean that this was a good move. This this Zerg should have absolutely blasted that. This does not count as these units staying alive. These units wanted to die. They accidentally stayed alive because the opponent got scared. One of the marines farted and they were like, out of here, mate. Now here comes the corruptor switch, which honestly also is a very surprising thing to see. Um... I'm not quite sure about it, but so far he's won every every single fight in this game. So I'm not even going to get upset about this. Four medivacs are out, and once again we have... I, I think this is some of the multitasking. Look at this legendary multitasking here. The five marines get killed by these banelings. Then these units get rallied once again onto creep. Has there been a single scan yet? Four creep tumors have been killed this entire game. Oh my god, there's some legendary multitask over here. Doesn't burrow any of the mines. Doesn't use stim. Doesn't burrow any of the mines. Will he use stim? Will he use stim? Will he use stim? Will he use stim? Burrows one of the mines. Does it get a shot? We get one mine shot. Man, this indeed was some legendary multitask. And we get a drop in towards the main base. Oh. On this little part. Very cool. So it's going to be able to take out 3-4 workers and lose both drops. You know what's funny? All of these fights were legitimately god-awful, right? None of them got controlled. 75% um, of the fights didn't even stim. But I do believe that this was probably still better than most of the other fights. As we see, the resources lost is pretty equal. Like, this is how good the Terran army is, naturally. Just without controlling it, you get about even trades. Um, even if you just send random marine marauder squads on, on creep and they seem to kill nothing. The baneling is such a cost inefficient unit that if you have marauders, the baneling naturally just trades poorly. 
Now, this could be a good fight. So you scan, you clear the creep, you borrow the mind, and then you try the pre-split. Or, in the case of Clem from Wish, you stim, you run as far on creep as you can, and then make sure you get hit by absolutely everything that is there. Corruptors, Hydras, Banelings. It doesn't matter. Now, these are two different uh, philosophies in StarCraft 2. You have the philosophy of trying to keep your units alive and optimizing the damage output because they stay alive longer. Or you have the philosophy that Clem from Wish uses here. And that is by throwing away all your units very quickly, making your opponent believe that he's winning um, so that he starts building weird units like Hydras and Corruptors rather than just going into units that are powerful like the Lurker. Uh, mine's actually dealing some damage once again. These Marines straight okay with the Hydras, obviously. I do have to admit, the upgrades have been very good. The macro during this game has not been bad either. There's been a lot of barracks and, well, really 16 barracks on the way, right? Or four more on the way. Okay, this is the first time we actually see some control. If he picks up these two Marines as he realizes he's losing this fight, I will be happy. He does not quite do that, but this was actually good. A resources lost is not looking great, but he killed some workers. There's still only a... Uh, wait, what? There's a hive and a lair. Okay, so now we have the six ultras on the way. This is where Clem from Wish told us that everything would start going wrong. And I'm not really looking forward to that. Because in my mind, everything had already been going wrong up until this point. If he would stim this, I think this is a winning fight, isn't it? No? Was that a winning fight? I kind of want to see that again. There's a lot of marines. It's like, what, 20, 25? It is 19 Hydras. There's also two. If he stims, I think he might win this. It's 3-3 upgrades against 2-2. Two, two. No, 1-2 even. These mines could burrow as well. Without stim and without control, it obviously isn't going to be great. He ends up killing four Hydras to be exact. But that's also because a lot of his time is spent shooting Corruptors. I actually think it might have been possible to, to deal a lot of damage here. Now, this is some actual multitask. Um, and he's even controlling this army. If there were drones here, this would have been a very good move. Of course, there's no medevac with it, so the units couldn't have been taken back. I don't think there's been, except for the five marines and two liberators that went back here, every unit that got sent out got killed. That is a 100% death rate for your army. That is really, really cool. I bet you'll get loads of people to sign up for that. You'll never come back. Oh, that's great. A couple of mines uh, walking into the ultras as well. Medifex get taken out. Marines once again not stimming, not running towards good choky positions either. And at this point, once you realize your opponent has ultras, you want to transition back into Marauder. Now, I do want to explain one more thing here, Clem from Wish, to you. And that is that the, the way that Terran works against Zerg is that you kind of have natural transitions. So, I'll pause it here for a second. Basically, you open up with your triple CC, something like you get three bases, you go up to five racks, you get a second factory at that point, and then you can get like either double tank production from these factories, or you can get mines from one factory and tanks from the other, or you can get triple mine from both. That's fine as well. Then you get a forward base, you go up to eight racks. Out of your first four barracks, uh, first five barracks, one of them has a tech lab, and the other four all have reactors. That ensures that you have maximum marine production, which is really useful against the Ling Banes that Zerg tends to, tends to build in the early to mid-game. Once your fort base is done, you add three barracks. These three barracks get a tech lab. That leaves you with a 4-4 split of tech labs and barracks. And then you start casually, you know, building a couple of marauders. The reason for this is because marauders are A, very good against banelings, at tanking banelings, tanking shots in general, they're, they're quite good at. Um, and B, uh, in case of like a lurker or ultra transitions, marauders are a lot tankier and are just really good against these units because of the armor types. So you kind of have these natural transitions. Then once you start taking a fifth base and other stuff, you can get a ghost academy or you can get more, you can get liberators out and you just kind of continue tacking on and on. You started with a higher marauder count and then went back completely into marines as you kind of wanted to keep at least some marauders in at any point in case of a transition or in case uh, there was going to be a huge amount of banelings. Mm, I, I think that is the incorrect way to really look at how Terran 
usually is played at the high level. Like you need a good mixture of marines and marauders and you should be consistently producing these. And then in combination with mines or with tanks, you can actually get pretty far. I'm sad to see that this was an orbital as well rather than a planetary that would have maybe made a defense possible here. Um, you also, I didn't quite realize this, but you actually haven't used any energy whatsoever um, on any of these bases. I wonder if you actually ever muled. I don't know. I haven't been paying attention to your bases because your fights were so mind-blowingly bad. And uh, this, I'm not trying to be funny or, or mean here, but if you're not going to be using the energy on your orbital commands, it is better to get a planetary. And it looks really dumb and it looks really bad. But this just makes no sense because, yes, this has the potential to be a lot of scans, but you never scan for creep. Oh, you did scan a couple of times to see where an army was. I guess. But if you don't use it for mules either, it might just be better for at least base 3 and 4 to build those into planetaries. If you're a bit too slow for that, once again, it is completely fine to say, hey, I'm not quick enough for this. Let me accept that and try to play around it. Getting orbitals on every single base is already an absolute no-go. But then if you're not even using it, it, it makes absolutely zero sense. It, it really just makes no sense. Now, what I do like here is that... Um, you're still trying. I think that's cool. Um, burrow the mines, burrow the mines, burrow the mines, burrow the mines, or walk them into the ultras. Both options are about equal. There's a, a lively debate going on currently with Terran scholars. What is better? Uh, move commanding them into your opponent's army or burrowing them and allowing them to kill 25 links per shot. They're not quite sure yet. Of course, Terran's not known to be the most intelligent species. Um, you continue your production. The game is pretty over at this point, but you don't know that. And I don't really mind you staying in, in that case. Hey guys, sorry to blatantly jump in here, but during the edit I saw something quite intriguing. The Zerg's APM, according to the WCS 3.0 overlay, dropped to zero for apparently quite some time. So I went and checked and as you can see in his first person perspective, he actually was AFK for over two whole minutes at this point. Obviously, we have no clue if there was like a pause that the Terran player cancelled or whatever. Could be, could not be. I also don't know why he was AFK. Maybe his pizza finished and he had to take it out of the oven. Or maybe his kid fell and needed some help or whatever. But apparently, Clem from Wish actually lost to an at least partly AFK player. And I thought that was quite funny. So, um, yeah, just wanted to show you that. Back to you, Kevin. You know, you said sorry for that, but it's really funny that the people that say sorry for staying in too long often are the people that don't have to say sorry. And the people that are completely unaware that they're in a game that is completely unwinnable, they never say sorry. And they just complain a little bit harder. Like, you don't see any units. You walk, like, what, 20 meters on creep? Like uh, two screens deep on creep and you still don't see anything. So, yeah, I I'm, I honestly, if I were you, I would actually be getting a bit hyped. You'd be like, hey, wait a second, am I accidentally winning here? This guy's like panic morphing in bailings. Now, sure, the moment this fella builds ultras with these, uh, with these larva or these next larva pop, uh, it's going to be hard. And even if he doesn't, I mean, if it's just going to be pure Bane, Hydra, Ling, it's still going to be pretty difficult. But honestly... It is playable. You have a lot of... Uh, oh, I think you just... Did you just scan a couple of times, maybe? Oh, yeah, you've just been scanning a lot. But if you would mule... Like, you're actually outmining your opponent pretty hard. You have a decent bank. I don't think this game is over whatsoever. And now you're actually multitasking as well. Look at this. You're stimming this army. This army... I have a feeling it might not be controlled right now. Um, I just... Oh, oh, a stim? Well, mines are a bit too far back. You're completely caught on creep again, but... This still was a better fight than all your other fights combined. Uh, here, here. Command center gets killed by a couple of hydras. This army falls. Honest... Wow. Very close. Very, very close. Yeah, I think, honestly, if your fights weren't so darn it, you're down 9k. I really didn't think that was possible in the units lost. Down 9k. I've never seen this in my life. Of a, a Terran playing marine bio 
Mara or Marine Mine Marauder. I really didn't think this was possible. Wow. Well, yeah, you're absolutely dead at this point. But I'm honestly impressed and shocked. It's like a weird emotion between these two. You fly the command center straight into your opponent's army as well. I mean, this ultra is just going to finish the game. At this point, it would be wise to leave. And now maybe this is what you... Okay, no, GG. Yeah, you left perfectly on time. Okay. Clam from which. But look, let's look at this one more time. I'm not even quite sure what you complained about. You just complained about the, the matchup in general, right? There was nothing specific where you were like, hey, this sucked. It's just, is it Inbar or, or do I suck? Um, and then Zerk is too broken. Well, um, let's just go over some of the claims initially that you make. The game goes on. I multi... No, actually the first sentence. Let's go there. Well, in this game, my first push was a little late. I had more units than it usually has and didn't do too badly with it. Well, the reason you had more units than it usually has is because you hit a minute late. It is kind of natural that if you do something a lot later, is that it's going to have slightly more of it. So that's good. Everything else was on point. I don't think that was completely true. I believe you got a tech lab on a factory, while that uh, factory should have been producing a reactor to swap with the starport. Then you should have swapped the factory with one of the barracks with the tech lab. All of these are details though, but saying that everything is on point when it isn't, of course, isn't exactly true either. Then, as the game goes on, I multitask really hard, attacking with multiple armies in different locations at the same time, while spending my money well behind it. Out of that entire sentence that lasted a bit too long already, um, the only thing that's true is that you spent your money quite well behind it. Not great, but it was fine. You had a lot of barracks you needed for it. During times you were still floating 500, 600 minerals. Um, but you didn't multitask really hard. It's like maybe you were juggling with one hand on the side or you're screaming at your kids to leave daddy alone because he's playing a video game right now and, and I can't pause it. Um, but you weren't multitasking in this game of StarCraft 2. Um, you never attacked with multiple armies. Sometimes you sent multiple groups to a part of the map, but then you completely left them alone. That's not multitasking. You didn't even really single task. Um, your upgrades also were really on point, giving me a lead in every fight. Your upgrades were indeed really on point, and that should have given you a lead in every fight had you ever controlled your units. Um, you even had more workers than him in a TVZ. That is correct. Um, but you also lost 10k resources more in units lost. I have no clue how that's possible. That really is extremely impressive. He did two tech switches. The first one from Lingbane into Hydra Corruptor. Um, yeah, I already kind of discussed that. Like, you, uh, There really is a natural progression in the way that, that Terran works. Um, and it's not so much you switches to one thing on the other. And if you're making switches in the late game, it's often between higher tech unit, not so much about the composition of your core bio army. It's more about, hey, do I want more ghosts? Do I want more liberators? Do I want more tanks? Rather than saying, hey, I want 35 marauders now or 25 marines. No, you always want to keep that, that kind of balance between these four reactors and four tech labs continuously producing units. Um, he forgets to, yeah, yeah. From that, from that point on, it's honestly kind of over. Your micro was extremely poor. Your multitasking was non-existent. Your macro and the way you build stuff was okay. Um, but if you're down 10k, 10k resources in units lost, then there's, yeah, like, I don't even know what to say at that point. Really, all you need to do is just siege up your units and stim, and you're going to get better fights than what you're currently doing. Like, I can't in good conscience say that Zerg is imbalanced if you play this poor, my friend. You... You sucked. And that's the hard, cold truth. All right. That's going to be it for today. Uh, today's episode, even, of Is It Imba or Do I Suck? If you did enjoy this, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully I'll see all of you next time in a new episode of Is It Imba or Do I Suck? Bye-bye.